Okay, folks, example one, part B, you'll notice all we're doing is we're changing the axis of revolution. So I left a lot of the elements up here. We already discovered where the two cross. They cross at four and nine, and we confirmed where they cross and all that. We tested a number in between. We've taken care of all those preliminary steps. Now, the x-axis is our new axis of revolution. So instead of y equals seven, we're down here on the x-axis. So we're like, okay. So all we're doing is we're changing, instead of revolving it around y equals seven, we're revolving around the x-axis, which I would point out to you is also a horizontal line. So again, the logic here would be to be thinking in terms of cross-sectional circles with holes in them, washers, okay? And um, so I guess the question a person could have would be, well, what's the equation of the x-axis? And here we go, that's a horizontal line with the equation y equals zero. So it's like, hello, my name is x-axis, but my friends call me y equals zero. All we're doing is changing the k value, aren't we? Okay, and, and look, the labels are still the same. 23 is farther away from zero than 15. So we still have the outside green one and the inside red one. It's just elongated the thing. Honestly, the mirror image would be a little bit farther down here, but it's still the same general picture. So what has changed? Well, we're still using the area of a circle, pi r squared. We're gonna take the area of the outside green one minus the area of the inside red one, pi r squared. We got our pi out here. We're gonna add up all the washers from four to nine. There's an infinite number of them. I've only drawn one of them, right? It's an infinite number of cross sections. And um, wouldn't the radius of the outside green circle be the distance from the green curve down to the axis of revolution, which I want to remind you is y equals zero this time. Oh, so instead of subtracting seven, we'll subtract zero. The outside circle will have a radius of outside curve minus zero. And then remember squared is here because that's just part of the formula for the area of a circle. Got our pi out front, radius of the outside green circle squared. Similarly, the inside red one would be the distance from the red curve down to the axis. Or there's a new axis of revolution in town. That's all that changed here. Change those sevens into zeros. Again, that will give you your six points that we owe you for each of these questions. And then if you feel like, oh, minus zero, that'll be easy. But you're gonna have to take these three terms and write them out twice and distribute and do the same here. And then make sure to distribute the negative to all these and combine like terms and algebra, 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 algebra. Then take the integral of each term using the power rule. And then, you know, f of b minus f of a, get a number out of it. So that's it as far as setting it up. And if you set it up, draw the picture and everything, you'll get your six points. And then if you want two more, you'll go ahead and evaluate that integral. And in this case, this integral that I put in the blue box is 2,708.3 repeating. And then remember to take it times pi, because that's just part of the deal, and units cubed. So really just a very small modification to that previous question, change the k into a zero. Okay, now, something pretty significant is gonna happen when we get to part C that we'll need to talk about. We're gonna revolve it around y equals 60, which I wanna point out to you is above here, and that's gonna change things around a little bit, so we'll get to that.